July 26, 1971, Apollo 15 leaves the pad at Cape Kennedy, blasted by a powerful Saturn rocket. The 363-foot-high rocket, burning 15 tons of fuel per second at blast-off, starts a 12-day round-trip voyage to the moon. Separations burst just as they should. On the mission, the all-Air Force crew, Colonels Dave Scott and Jim Irwin, will spend three days on the lunar surface, while orbiting Major Al Warden on the command ship shoots moonscape hitherto on film. Ground control monitors the LEM docking, and it goes smoothly. A little later, they worry over a short circuit and a leak. But the astronauts prove to be plumbers and electricians. So it's go for descent. The lunar module Falcon undocks for the landing. Here's the target area where scientists hope to find rocks older than any ever found on Earth. From the Falcon, the command ship Endeavour is shown orbiting the Apennines. and twisting Hadley Rill. Falcon swoops down at a steep angle. It's the trickiest landing yet attempted because of the surrounding peaks. They are about to make what Houston scientists will call a bullseye landing. Setting down only a thousand yards from the target, a near miracle accomplishment. A TV camera mounted outside the LEM allows Houston and the whole world to watch Mission Commander Dave Scott step onto the moon's surface, the seventh man to do so. LEM pilot Jim Irwin descends and the moon exploration begins. explorations of 67 hours. They will collect samples of rock and soil in three kinds of terrain, the mountainous Apennines, the cratered plain, and from the rim of 1,200 foot deep Hadley Rill. A minor difficulty is experienced. The sensational lunar rover gets stuck on the unloading platform. Ground control is concerned as they watch the TV monitor. The trouble is overcome and the rover is ready to roll. The rover, an electric-powered car, can make eight miles per hour top speed. On Earth, it weighs 450 pounds, but in the one-sixth gravity of the moon, it weighs only 80. The rover carries a color TV camera controlled by an engineer in Houston a quarter million miles away. Underway on the historic lunar buggy ride, the astronauts head for the 14,000-foot Apennines. Houston gets a running commentary on terrain features from the astronauts who are masters of geology. In all, they collect 171 pounds of samples, tagging each for future identification by Earth scientists. Moving on foot is cumbersome, and Colonel Scott takes a tumble. covers without an assist. They take periodic rests and change suit temperatures according to Houston's orders. The toughest job is boring holes to get core samples. Scientists will read the eight-foot core like a history book of what has happened at that spot on the moon going back millions of years. of Hadley Rill, the astronauts are carefully monitored. When they begin to get in too deep, Houston orders them back. The mission controlled TV camera makes a final panorama of the rugged terrain shadowed by the towering Apennines. A farewell experiment proves Galileo was right. In a vacuum, a falcon's feather and a hammer fall at the same speed. Many recording instruments are deployed to continue sending data after they leave. The rover is abandoned, but the U.S. flag honors their achievement. 
Now, for the first time, Earth can see the Falcon take off courtesy of Rover's TV camera. Aboard Endeavour, Al Warden watches Falcon ascend. His three lonely days in orbit end. The last experiment, they launch a satellite to study radiation and magnetic forces. Major Warden takes a spacewalk to recover film from the service module. August 7th, 12 days and 7 hours in space end with a fiery re-entry. Friction heats the capsule to 5,000 degrees, momentarily cutting off all communications. 300 miles west of Hawaii, it's a hard splashdown as one parachute fails. But all were safe and Houston took a deep breath. Apollo 15 was a huge success. Houston was not the only spectator. A Soviet trawler monitored Apollo's triumph. After a half million mile journey, Apollo missed its mark, the aircraft carrier Okinawa, by only six miles. A special reward awaits the trio, this time no quarantine. Scientists have ruled no life is present on the moon, not even germs. These heroes can rejoin families and friends without delay. At Houston, the heroes view their moon samples and the Genesis Stone, the oldest bit of the universe ever found, and the gem of man's greatest and most successful moon visit. Another epic for world history.